In this video, I'm going to show you how to take sample data and to create a confidence interval for the population mean. And we're going to do this at the 95% level of certainty. So we're in the workbook 07 probability confidence intervals, and we are in the worksheet Santa. And you can also see we have our code book here, which tells you what the variables mean and each of the values for those variables. And we have the answers so you can see where we're going to check in. So let's look at the variables here. So there's three different variables, children, gifts, and cookies. And each variable we can go through. Um, how many children under 10 are there in your household? And this is going to be a numeric answer. So it's going to be a number, and it's indicating here what the missing data values are. If there's a 99, that is missing data. And gifts, how many gifts did Santa leave at your house? You can say, don't know, no answer, and in this case, this was coded as a negative one. And obviously, numbers would be um, valid values that are non-negative. And here it says, cookies. How many cookies did you leave out for Santa? And don't know, no answer is a 99. So as we go forward, we want to make sure that we exclude any missing, val any missing values for data that we're interested in analyzing. So for this particular example, we're going to find the average number of cookies that people leave out for Santa. So the first thing we want to do, we want to designate this as a data table. And if you remember from the last video on this topic, all we do is we select any one individual cell on here and we hold in control and press T. We signal that it has headers, that these three words are not interpreted as data. These are the header for each data column. And we click OK. Now we can see that we have a data table here. And this is going to let us filter out that missing data. So if you recall from cookies, the 99 was our missing data. So we want to get rid of that. And that's going to eliminate. So you can see this row right here is 64. This row is going to disappear. So we go from 63 to 65. Now that row is still there, but it's hidden. We want to keep that, take that into account as we move forward in this, for this problem. And let's also give our table a name here. Let's call it Xmas. OK, so now we have our table, Xmas, and we have our variable cookies. So let's go up here. So we have our sample data, and what do we want to do here? We want to calculate our sample mean, and then we want to know, can we generalize that sample data to the population mean? So what is our sample mean? If you recall from the previous video, when we want to incorporate a mean, but we want to exclude missing values, we have to use the aggregate function. So we go here, and we're looking for the average which is the first one. We want to ignore hidden rows, five. And our data was the Xmas table. And the variable was cookies. So there is our average number of cookies left out for Santa. Now, how many people are there? This is, again, we can use the aggregate function, and we can count up the number of people. And again, we want to hide the hidden rows. So we want to count up the valid data. And our data is Xmas, opening bracket, cookies. So there are 1,789 people and they in the sample, and they've left out an average of 8.24 cookies. Now our sample standard deviation, we did this last time, aggregate, we can go to standard deviation. Either one of these is going to give us pretty similar answers because um, the sample size is so big, but I'll choose 8. 
and I will hide missing rows, and again I'm going to do Xmas cookies. And our confidence interval that we're interested in, we're doing a 95% confidence interval. So I'll type here 0.95 is the proportion form of that. So the first step in all of this is to calculate alpha and our degrees of freedom. So alpha is just 1 minus our level of confidence. Okay, so the 95% level of confidence, and then our alpha is going to be 0 0.05. Our degrees of freedom is just going to be n minus 1, so I can do equals n minus 1. Enter. Okay, so step one is taken care of. Step two is to calculate t. Now there's a couple different ways we could do this. One way is to look up our t value in the table. All we need to know is our alpha and our degrees of freedom. So if we go to our t table, our alpha, we're doing the two-tailed alpha, is 0 0.05, and our degrees of freedom was quite large. We had several thousand people, so we're going to go with the infinity value here, which is going to be 1.96 for our t value. So control C to copy that. Go back, paste that in there. The other way to do this is to use the t inverse function. And again, it's up to you what you would like to do um, for these problems, but this is basically where I had generated the values in that table from. So t dot inverse, and we have a two-tailed. Now what's the probability? Well, our alpha level is 0 0.05, and what is our degrees of freedom? It is n minus 1, right there. How convenient. And as you can see, it's giving you very similar answers. So if you increase this even more and more and more, this is ultimately going to equal 1.96, all the out in infinity. But for our purposes, either of these is fine. This one is just a little rounded. So moving down to step three, calculating the standard error. So I'm showing you the formula right here that we want to use to calculate the standard error. And we can just type in equals s, which is this number right here, 3.86. I want to divide by the square root of n minus 1. And again, n minus 1, we can just use our degrees of freedom, which is right there, because the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So we have our standard error. And our next step is to calculate our confidence interval. So I'm suggesting the first step we can do here is to calculate the margin of error, which is just t times sigma x bar. So our margin of error is just t times the standard error. There we go. And our upper limit right here and our lower limit are just going to be the mean plus or minus our margin of error. So for the lower limit, we take our mean and we subtract our margin of error. And for the upper limit, we take our mean and we add our margin of error. And now we're ready to make our conclusion. So I can say that I am 95% certain that the average number of cookies that people in the US leave out for Santa is between 8. 
8.06 and 8.42. So make sure we're rounding when we report these numbers, otherwise you're going to systematically bias your numbers one way or the other. So make sure you're rounding to the hundredths place. And that is it. So that's how to calculate a confidence interval given sample data.